13 states, six months, 3,500 miles. Everything was going just fine, man. Right oh. as me. My knee ended up swelling up to almost the size of a grapefruit. But you think it's good I can I should hit the water tomorrow, no problem? I think you do very well. We just gotta hope he doesn't mess up the other one. This is what it's like to hit a sandbar. We gotta take days off here and there to go exploring. We've summited the Pinhorn Valley, it's called. We saw what we thought was an old abandoned shack. It was a pretty eerie house. There was a thing that looked like blood in there. What the hell was that? This is one creepy ass place. My name is Brian. And this is my best buddy. And his name is Brian too. Out of all the water in the world, only 1% is fresh water. It's all we got, and we want to explore all of it. So we've decided to start with a trip that's never been done before. A 4,000 mile journey from Milk River, Alberta, all the way down to New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, and did I mention we're going to do it in a canoe? Crazy? You're right. We're the paddling brines. The plan for today is get back in the water, start tracking distance, start tracking distance fast, and get to the US border, get cleared out, and get that out of the way. Um, I really don't know how I'm gonna go negotiate what's coming up here, but. To cross into the United States, what we needed to do is we needed to get an I-68 form. That's a form that allows us to cross into the United States without checking in at a border station for up to 72 hours. But once you cross that borderline, you have only that 72 hours to find, if they don't find you, to find them. But right now we're actually, um, I think we're about 30 seconds. We're 30 seconds off of the American border, the 49th parallel, which is not 30 seconds in time. That's, uh, if you take a degree, say there's 360 degrees, so in the GPS coordinate, uh, you take one degree and you could divide it into 60 minutes. And each one of those minutes you could divide into 30, uh, into 60 seconds rather. So we are on, we are in that lingo, we are 30 seconds away from the American border. The way the Milk River flows is it doesn't just straight cross right into the United States. It kind of flirts with the, uh, with the border for a little while. It, it meanders in and then back out and then back into the United States and then back out. After about a day of that, we get fully into the United States. We're gonna paddle 30 kilometers into the States where we get our ditch out road and that's uh, the following day after that when the fun 40 kilometer portage begins. It looks like it's gonna be the biggest, uh, the biggest portage of the actual trip. We've got uh, about a quarter of a mile um, through farmer's fields to, uh, to a dirt road, and then we have about eight miles down a dirt road to the actual border lines. We've kind of been hoping that like, I don't know, on the 49th parallel, the Americans had some kind of camera or, or patrol car or helicopter or something that would spot us and think we were like infiltrating something or whatever you call it. And, come check us out and that would kind of, you know, when they saw that everything was legit, would probably save us a trip to the border. That's the only thing right now that we're, we're very unsure of. We don't know how this crossing is gonna go, how we're gonna be treated. Are we allowed to stay in the States for six months? Is everything gonna clear here? I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of an outrageous story to try and explain to someone, especially a border patrolman. So we just gotta get in the water, get there and get this over with. Okay, so we just arrived at what we believe to be the takeout for the portage to uh, the American border. It's about seven o'clock. Bry's gonna watch the stuff here. And I'm gonna go see if I can find that road, that dirt road that's supposed to get us out of here. 
because I think we might have been before these. It might have just been just before this. But either way, we should still, it'll be back up and over that way. North is that way. Okay, I'll go check this out. If we're not checked in within the, the, first, uh, the first 72 hours of being in the United States, there is a chance that, uh, you know, they punish us with, uh, with you know, uh, to the full extent of the law. We, uh, we, illegally, uh, we illegally crossed into the United States. Uh, we're trying to avoid uh, border patrol and customs. And uh, in their mind, I mean, if we're, if we're sneaking in, who knows what we're bringing in? We could actually do jail time. Bro, I don't know. Uh, looks kind of funny, the picture that's not compared to the river. I'm gonna go up top of the mountain and see what I can see from there. Well, this looks somewhat of a road. Very old dirt, unused road there, but a road. I should have brought the binoculars, damn it. Um, I don't know, I think we might be in the right position now again. I, I think. Okay buddy, there's a, there's a barn and a farmhouse up top. I'm gonna have to go talk to the farmer and see what we could do. Uh, we'll talk to this farmer and find the way out before it gets too dark and too late to want to do anything, you know? I don't even know where, what day we're on now. It's gotta be 10 or 11. We finally showed up at this stupid portage that we have to do. It's 40 miles to cross the border and uh, yeah, that we can't find the road. I haven't gone up to see you just yet, but I had enough trouble hiking all of our crap the 15 feet up from the water over this tiny little ridge that was pretty much straight up that I kind of not looking forward to these 140 foot high hills. I just spent the past hour, hour and a bit, hiking around up top, looking for this road. There's no roads anywhere here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sure how much more fun we're gonna have on this portage. I'm just gonna be glad as all hell to get back uh, to the river and the canoeing, I think. If it takes two days to get there, two days to get back, that's fine. But uh, we just need a starting point because right now we have nothing to go off of. I'd like to go to sleep pretty soon so we could get up early and uh, start this uh, ridiculous uh, trek to the goddamn border. That's that. Bye bye. On our way up, we had seen this plane circling us. And then all of a sudden, this pickup truck comes rolling over the Badland Hills. The sirens, the whole rig. And he shouts from the truck, boys, no sudden movements. I'm coming in to check you out. I really don't know how I'm gonna go negotiate what's coming up here, but. If we're not checked in within the first 72 hours of being in the United States, we could actually do jail time. That's the only thing right now that we're we're very unsure of. We don't know how this crossing is gonna go. We've kind of been hoping that like, I don't know, on the 49th parallel, the Americans had some kind of camera or, or patrol car or helicopter or something that would spot us and think we were like infiltrating something or whatever you call it. We just gotta get in the water, get there and get this over with. Okay, so probably about 7.30, we woke up to cows mooing at us. Yeah. Right over that bank, as soon as we got out of the tent, they ran away. Um, today's the day, right? Yeah, we're at least gonna go ask the farmer and figure out where uh, where the nearest road to the border is, because we have no, no clue. So one has to pack, stay here and pack, one has to go out to the farm, so. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. and then on shoot, right? Yeah, and, but what? Winner goes, winner stays. Winner gets to pick what he wants to do. Um, winner gets to pick. One, two, three, shoot. shoot. I guess I'll go ask the farmer. Okay, so bring the water jug, I guess. I guess I'll bring the water jug and... And a white flag because he's going to see it coming. We were actually quite nervous about running out of water. Um, 
right as we were pulling up to this uh, this Border Patrol portage, we'd kind of been uh, relying uh, relying on the assumption that there would be houses near the border, and the, the little bit of water that we had left would at least make us to the top of the hill and to, to the nearest country road, and from there, we'd be able to locate a water source, or at least a, a cleaner water source. But uh, I can tell you by the end of, uh, by, the, by the time we'd got all of our gear up to the top of that hill, we were, uh, we were running pretty much on empty as far as water was concerned. The first little part of our portage was up uh, a pretty steep bank, right up to the, uh, to the farmer's fields. Okay, well, I, uh, where I headed off down to try and find uh, an easier route for us to take uh, to take all our gear along because uh, the farm lady, she, she told us the shortest route to her house and then she gave us directions from her driveway but to get to her house you've got to go up and down about two or three coolies and all the gear that we have, it's just going to take so long. Yeah, so I looked over to see if there's any shortcuts down the ridge. Um, we're not going to find any shortcuts. This is what it is. Crap. You know, looking at it now, this is probably the greatest challenge of my life. Oh, this is going to be way too long. You're making it so easy on us, buddy. Yeah, this could take us a while. We pulled out uh, to where our maps had said we were very close to an actual border crossing station, which we had to hike all our gear back up to to go get checked out before we could continue on our way. So we hiked up this hill to go check if we could find a road on our way, because it's about eight trips, four trips each to get all our stock up there and we had to bring everything to the border. So on our way up, we'd seen this plane circling us and we figured being this close to the border, that this must be a surveillance plane that they basically have caught us. You know, we're, tra we're trapped now, they know where we are. On our last load up, that plane kept circling. Yeah, surveillance plane. Definitely, definitely, like without a doubt it was a surveillance plane. So we decided then to put the camera away because uh, if it was the Border Patrol, we don't want to be pointing any uh, <laughs> big machinery at them, you know, no, uh, no terrorist threats or anything, so. Bye-bye, thank you. Got a little nervous there, put the camera away and uh, just uh, just kept working on the portage. As soon as we got up, yeah, yeah I don't even know Buddy's name, but in a, one of them F-350 Super Duty Ford fancy trucks with, you know, the sirens, the whole rig. Pulls up. U.S. Border and Customs Patrol Officer, uh, yeah, pulls up. He jumps out of the truck, he's behind the door, standing back, I guess, protecting himself, and he shouts from the truck at a fair distance, boys, no sudden movements, I'm coming in to check you out. He unclipped his gun, didn't take it out, but it was unclipped and the hand was, he was, it, you know, he was ready to get that gun out if he needed. From then on, we kind of just, uh, <laughs> we, we kind of giggled a little bit and uh, started explaining to him who we were, what we were doing. Right away, we said, don't worry, sir, we have our passports, we have an I-68 form, uh, we're canoers from Canada, we're filming a documentary and we're hoping, uh, hoping to make it all the way down to New Orleans in, uh, in our canoe. And, so he started to warm up to us a little bit, you know. He started to realize, well, wait a second, these boys, uh, these boys might be, uh, might be on the level here. They might not be, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, illegal immigrants trying to trying to sneak into the country. He's going to check out for us because now that he's already checked all our gear out, we might just have to go. We might be able to leave our gear here or with the with the farmer, and if that's okay with them, of course, or just here in the corner then we could run to the border and be back today and back on the river tomorrow, yeah. which is boom, bing, bang. If we got to take all this, it's two days, guaranteed, oh, sure. at least. We basically got to sit for a nice hour break where he told us specifically we weren't allowed to move from there or do anything or touch anything. We are to sit next to the canoe for the next hour or so until he came back. We're waiting, we're waiting on the border patrol dude to come back and hopefully give us the all clear. Best case scenario, we have to walk in with just our passports and we'll be able to leave everything here, which would be completely awesome. Um, I highly doubt we're going to get the best case scenario because so far our lives just don't work like that. I'm hoping that all we have to do is hike all this shit back down to the river and go back, 
get back to paddling because that's a lot more fun. I wasn't too concerned, but I was, I was actually more concerned that he was going to make us still pack all our gear six miles up the road to the border crossing, get checked out, come back six miles, which would have been another three days delay. I really don't know how I'm going to go negotiate what's coming up here. If we're not checked in within the first 72 hours of being in the United States, we could actually do jail time. That's the only thing right now that we're we're very unsure of. We don't know how this crossing is gonna go. We've kind of been hoping that like, I don't know, on the 49th parallel, the Americans had some kind of camera or, or patrol car or helicopter or something that would spot us and think we were like infiltrating something or whatever you call it. And we just gotta get in the water, get there and get this over with. What ended up happening is he checked out all of our gear, everything was cleared, but he still had to go back to the border station to report us, check through, everything's fine, and get us the clear to go. We weren't sure if we'd have to still make that journey up there until he got back. Bryce half passed out in his seat over here. Well, let's get a shot of Bry passed out in his seat. I mean, I'm not overly worried because we aren't bringing cocaine across the border. We're, we're, we're canoeing, right? It's not. Uh, it's a pretty peaceful thing. We're doing a peaceful uh, adventure. So we, I wasn't too concerned, but I was, I was actually more concerned that he was going to make us still pack all our gear six miles up the road to the border crossing, get checked out, come back six miles, which would have been another three day delay. So we sat very peacefully waiting on him to return. And when he did return, he said, uh, well, good news, boys. Uh, We've decided you don't have to go. Uh, you don't have to go to the border. Yeah, he saved us a good 10-mile hike from here into town, which is uh, awesome. Now uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab the water jug, try and bother the farmer one last time today, ask her for a little bit more water, and uh, yeah, Brian's gonna bring all this stuff back down to the river. No, it's looking like a pretty good day. Not not too. All right, let's. Uh, not too shabby. miles becomes two kilometers up and down. Yeah. I'm glad that plane spotted us. So once again, man, we are stoked that we don't have to go all the way to the border. Because I'm dead tired and what, what did we do, a kilometer? Yeah, a kilometer, but straight uphill with no path, complete bushwhacking. In, they say, our maps say we're in Montana, but dude, this is, this is a desert. Matt, we're, we're, there's we're cactuses, in Africa. There's cactuses everywhere, cacti everywhere. Everywhere you go. Stabbing us in the feet and the yeah. legs. It's, it's so hot out here. There isn't a cloud in the sky. It's gotta be, what was that reading saying on that thing? 30, 35 degrees or something? Yeah, I, 35 degrees Celsius. No conflict, no conflict in this episode. All happy yeah. in games. <laughs> no I am so stoked. Oh yeah. Back to the water where we belong. Okay, last trip. Back down to the water. We weren't expecting to paddle at all today. But hell, we might get 20 clicks on the river done. Hell knows we've already done at least 10 here with the up and downs and the amount of times we've done it. So, I mean, we may not have gone to the border, but we still hiked. Yeah, thank God I get to be the cameraman on this one. Brian's got his whole pack on. He's got the canoe going up. This is the way you're really supposed to portage things. This is the way we do it when we're not on the wheel system. I guess we've come about 240 kilometers since Milk River, since uh, the town of Milk River where we, where we put in at, which is not a bad distance considering we only have another 100 kilometers to go to get to, to Haver. Right now, feeling pretty good about that. I don't know, during these times when it gets pretty tough and you're kind of thinking, Maybe this wasn't the best idea. Those thoughts never, I don't know, they never phased me for more than a split second. I mean, all in all, I'm having, I'm having a great time anyways. If it's not challenging, then why bother, right? 
if everyone could do it, then everyone would. The border patrol agent that came by and stopped us after the surveillance plane had spotted us, he was making us open every piece of gear we had. And he kind of apologized almost for it and said, well, guys, I, you know, I hope you understand why I'm doing this. And we said, sure, like, no problem. Like, we had expected that. But he almost felt guilty. And then he says, well, because nobody does this. Nobody, nobody crosses on this river and tells us they're canoeing to New Orleans. This is the first time any of us have ever heard of this. So I hope you boys understand. We were like, well, sure, yeah, I guess it's a little out there. Even by our standards, it's a little off the wall. But, um, you know, we're coming to realize that, you know, maybe, maybe it wasn't just everyone back home that thinks we're nuts. Maybe we are a little loopy. I don't know. I think uh, I think we might just be a bit loopy and you know what I had a lot of uh, a lot more worries a lot more doubts ever every day but then when you get a day that the border patrol guy comes up and says well tell you the good news boys is that you're not gonna have to hike it all the way to the border because I figured it out for you and I'm gonna just check it out here and ask you these few last questions and you guys can be on your way no doubt eh Last 10 feet. I'm gonna bring it right down. You guys can also see it's a little bit treacherous. And he even puts the canoe the right way so it's easier to load. Son of a. How do you feel? I feel like a million bucks, buddy, because that's the last walk we do. What we thought to be the hardest part of this entire journey has just been wiped right off the map. Crossing the border means that our, our big first hurdle of the trip, uh, one of the things we were kind of worried about uh, is, is all behind us. We're kind of at the point of no return now. Now it's time that we can't turn back, we won't turn back. We're there, there's another five or so months ahead, but this is the real, it has really started now. And we're at that point of no return. From here, we're, we're gonna make it or we're gonna die trying. Adieu! See you guys later. Did we run aground already? <laughs>